welcome back to How You Living on our Mental Health March. Monday. Monday. Oh, okay, March mental Monday. Mental Health March Monday. <laughs> Monday or mental Health March. Men mental Health March. And it just happens to be Monday. Okay. <laughs> so I'll mind my I business. Am. <laughs> so we will we would love to welcome our guest, Mr. Dirk Minifield. Hey. Thank you. You ladies. were, if I'm not mistaken, he was our very first guest. You were our very first guest when we were at the other. Do you remember that? Was he the first person? He was the very first. I don't think he was the first. Who, who, who do we have before you? I think you had the doctor on first. Yeah, we before. had an what acupuncturist doctor? that I was yes. I missed. And no, 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 no. Mm -mm. You the, you know how I know? Because I have every flyer from day one. And you're the only one we didn't have a flyer for. So she don't have every flyer from day one. Well, that's right. Because, <laughs> because that was pre-flyer. He was pre-flyer. Now you got a flyer. Yeah, I did. <laughs> you are such a I feel smart. Odd. My co-host is such a smart ass. <laughs> he was giving me the look to say I could say You it. two are, and I remember both of y'all were ugly the first when? time. Both of y'all were making, I remember no. that so clearly. No, don't say I'm that. I'm like, yeah, I think you've that. known him before. Because y'all are just a little too comfortable. But um, can you give us a little bit of background about yourself? Yes. Um, no. I'm Are you, what's it, explain what an EAP is first. EAP, time. what that is. Actually, it's a CEAP. Uh, okay. It's a Certified Employee Assistance Professional. And what that does is that that person is the go-between between HR and the employees. And what it does, it provides all the resources of HR to the employees so that they can get to the needed services. Awesome. And it's a crisis counselor. Okay. So when an employee is being, for me, it would be an NBA player, is in a crisis, then I go out, assess the situation, and then defuse the situation, and then get them to the needed necessary resources that we have, whether it be treatment, therapy, or what. And then I case manage that okay. all the way through the process. Until they recover. Until, until they, they recover. Then I can get them back into to the main street of their employment. Nice. Yeah. Wow. And I know uh, corporate all corporations have an EAP program. Yes. So it's good to yes. see MBA is following that yes. suit. Yes. It's awesome. And and that was one of the thoughts in doing it. You know, it's, we've been having this for going on over 30 years now awesome. as part of the NBA and a lot of people don't know about it because it's totally behind the scenes, right. it's totally confidential. Wow. All the stories yeah. you could tell. You know, and How about you tell some stories but just don't name names. You don't have to <laughs> oh, name no, names. With, with HIPAA you want to be, you know. Teasing. Well you got to be very, <laughs> you know, but, but that's what makes it so great in that the confidentiality yeah, right. about it. Because if anything sneaks out, they're going to blame you. So, exactly. Yeah, exactly. you have to or, be right. Or so if they could tell someone had a crisis on TV, right. and then you happen oh, to mention it, and they go, yeah. oh, well, he mentioned it. It yeah. must have been, oh, God, because he did ABC. Exactly. And, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah exactly. So have do you have some pretty crazy stories to tell? Oh, of course. Of course. I mean, you know, the, the biggest thing about <clears throat> working with basketball players or uh -huh. athletes in general, because I did work with the NFL for a while, mm -hmm. is that – People don't understand that they have issues too. Right. They're, they're human. Right. You know, and you know, you hear people say, well, that guy, you know, well, he's stupid, he's ignorant. No, he's sick. Right. Yeah. It's right. And he's difference. thrown into a, a world, a right. culture that he wasn't prepared for. Well, Most of them grew up in poverty and they're overnight millionaires. Right. So. Or, or even like when they go to college, they're basically mm -hmm. road hard right. and they don't give them the, you know, how and they to deal with. Right. And, and they they're coddled. very, yeah. very and, coddled. Oh, yes. Yeah. They coddled. And so, Did they coddle you in high school? Oh, I mean, in college? High school and college, probably. High school and college. Because you were the star of UK, right? Exactly. Yeah. But now here's the question. So we, we realize that once they go into college, they're, they're road hard get injuries and they're like okay there you go a few people right. make it so then you have those that are also injured that can't play mm -hmm. but then on the flip side of that I wonder like what happens to them mentally when right. their career is done Absolutely. and then now what do I do who am I without being this player that well, is a very, that is a good, very good question yeah. because that's a we're trying one. to change that with the NCAA mm -hmm. and as you see some of it with this monetization that they're doing now with the likeness of the players, you know, right. the college players, that's going to help some to give right. them some good. some some economic yeah, like uh, they're return able to... on them playing. Very mm -hmm. good. Which will help their mental state. But nobody really cares right. to answer your question. Right. Once you're out of the system, they don't care. Right. You know what I'm saying? And there's no resources for those players. So what happens is 
and, and and I could tell you tell you this from my own personal being a dad and having a son who's went through this situation. Right. My son had had gotten into trouble and got kicked out of school. Mm -hmm. He had to leave school. I brought him home, which was that's part of being eighteen, mm -hmm. which right. was okay. <laughs> but in that time that he was at home. You know, the, the things that he had to go through psychologically, right. mm -hmm. the depression, the embarrassment, all those things that, that I had to help him with. Those other players who don't have a dad like me, right. mm -hmm. who are in mental health field, I end up seeing them in mental health treatments. Mm -hmm. Centers. So it's too, uh, after the fact. It's after the fact because been affected. Yes, because they turn to something. Right. They want to feel. They want to change how they feel. Right. So most they of the time, they want to numb the pain. Numb right. the pain. Right. Because it is pain, and that and that is what is wrong with the college system. Mm -hmm. They don't have anything in place for people who get injured, can't play no more. Mm -hmm. No, something the, happens. The he gets, yeah, the pressure. They don't. They don't have it. And what about on the flip side, the the athlete who's not playing and maybe also got him. He was in the NBA, uh -huh. had all the fame, glory. And well, you're looking sudden, at that guy. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Yeah, you no. have a very amazing story. You're looking at story. that guy. Because you that, went from the top That of the happened line. to me. Oh, what, right, what right. was your story? Well, my story was that, you know, I came out of college. I was I was number one pick of, of New Jersey Nets. Uh I've been playing and starting. I was two-time high school All-American. I'm a Mitchell All-American in college. And then I come to the pros, and all of a sudden, now I don't play no more. Right, mm -hmm. right. I'm sitting on the bench. Mm -hmm. Actually, I'm sitting on the bench eating popcorn. Right. While That's how they, much I didn't play, while they right. were playing. Interesting, right. You know, and so mentally, now my self-esteem, how, how I look at myself, because you got to understand, athletes look at themselves on how they perform, right. mm -hmm. you know, and it and, and so it took me to a dark place, and I ended up, you know, getting caught up in drugs, and ending my career mm -hmm. because of the fact of it is I couldn't deal with all of a sudden going from the top mm -hmm. to the bottom, mm -hmm. and I had no one to talk to. And this is why your current position is so, so effective important. Exactly. because you've been there. There's no judgment at exactly. all. Exactly. And that's exactly what so, they, and that why they can relate to you. Right. So what, what was this? I mean, because we understand where you were, but how did you shift mentally to say, mm -hmm. well, let me, instead of being here, let me see how I can help others. Right. Well, what happened was it got worse. <laughs> that helped. I went to you jail. Hit, right. You got oh, to, right. You have I to I went hit. to jail. I hit bottom. Yeah. Right. And, and gave you time to contemplate. Yes, contemplate. You know, it, 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 you know, I'm, I'm, I'm. I believe I have a lot of faith. So yes, it was God setting me still, so he, so I could hear Him, because mm -hmm. I'd been running for so long right. Right. from Him. Mm -hmm. mm. And when I found that faith again, that spirituality, I came to Houston and got treatment, and I've been here ever since. And then I, want, then that's when I found my calling. Yeah was to help people like myself mm -hmm. and and help them to not go to the places that I went to. So we know that sometimes, especially in the African-American community, you know how we think about therapy. Yeah, yeah. It's oh, like, no. I'm not going Just to go therapy. to church. Especially, especially <laughs> yeah. men. Yeah, I'm especially like, you know, men. Women are a little right. more open. But uh -huh. So with that, with you going to them, how open were they initially from even accepting the help or even meant thinking that they needed the help? Right. Initially, no, they wasn't. It 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 was actually for for our program in the NBA, it took us uh five to ten years to really get our our black professional athletes to understand that this was help. Mm -hmm. This is not this is not something that you're going to be looked at as weak because that's how it's looked in the in, in our community that if you go get help, you're weak, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you're not strong, right. and it's okay to ask for help. We had to break down those barriers, right. and it took a while. It well, took a long while. We have a question from mm -hmm. a viewer or a listener. Uh, what has been the new cri What are the new crisis trends? Uh, since the COVID outbreak, are there are you seeing more people like turning to marijuana 
or the what is drugs. the yeah yeah <laughs> well i could say this you know is that overall in in this pandemic we have seen in this country that that the percentages of people having substance what we call a substance use disorder now mm -hmm. is going is trending up Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's it's a problem. Up, right? and, that's and that's even a problem. with the athletes. Well, with the athletes, because of the fact of it is, is that you know, you in in our business right now, you know what I'm saying. They're not testing for certain things, mm -hmm. so we can't monitor it like we normally would. Right. You know what I'm saying. So, and 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 that's due to to the fact of the other stressors that are being involved with the pandemic. In that, when you talk about isolation, right. social distancing, COVID protocols, COVID testing, because we do a lot of COVID testing, what people don't understand. Our players get tested three times a day. Oh, really? Three yes. times a day? Yes. So we can, we can flip yes. that quick. Wow. Right? Because because we 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 have to make ensure their safety of right. not spreading the disease to kill the business. Oh. So so I know that you were even beyond looking at the players that you also just deal with youth. Yes, that so is my new passion. That's your new passion. Yes, and that's good because that's where we really need it. Right. We really. Well, I've been in I've been in youth sports for over thirty plus years in the AAU field, and I deal. I coach girls now. Okay, and, I didn't know that. And moving from girls, well, I did that about five or six years ago. Because my daughter was playing, and I said, right. well, I'm, well, she's playing. And she's I'm a like, coach, too, right? Yes, she coaches okay, from me. Awesome. It's in the <laughs> but family. what happened was I started to see these girls mm -hmm. don't have outlets, don't have people to right. talk to. They, they, they talk amongst themselves. And girls more than, than boys go to social media for, for uh -huh. validation. Right. You know, young adolescent boys don't get validation a lot through social media other than through the sports platform. Mm -hmm. But girls socially. They, yeah, we're they, just social creatures right, right. in general. And and the flip side of that is that if they're attacked in that social media medium, mm -hmm. then they shut down. Right. right. They right. close off. And even even compared to athletes, like the female athlete right. compared to the male it's athlete, totally different. they tend to throw more at the male athletes and kind of overlook females. And Yeah, they, you know. they they definitely overlook. I mean, because if you look at it right now, we all talking about the NBA, but the WNBA just finished <laughs> right? up. Right. And they went through a bubble situation. So they had a lot of stressors. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and, then, and then there's a lot of there's a lot of stressors for the female athlete that we just don't address. We mm. just don't enough. Right. Yeah, because they have a, a, an either an, even another thing that they're dealing with being a female right. Right. and not making the type of money exactly. and maybe needing a side job. And you're, you know, here you are exactly. professional, but you need a side hustle. Yeah. So and, a, you know. and, the, and the aspect of being viewed as uh -huh. not a female. Right. Mm. See, that plays a big Damn. part into it because of the fact of it is is that, you know, because they're in an all women's sports league right. and they look manly in physical stature. Right. So some of them can get viewed as not being a female, you know. That's, that's a lot going on. There oh, yes. So we're going to take a little short break because we're going to come back and, and talk about the passion of working with the kids, especially yeah. like we we're saying during COVID. Yeah. To see how that's affected them also mentally, emotionally, physically, yeah. all of that good stuff. And yeah, I'd like to talk about some of the statistics out there, too. Yeah. Oh, we definitely need to do that. So, <laughs> so join us, and we'll take a little short break so we can find out how to help the babies. <laughs> 